Hello everyone, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter. You know, there's so many diet books uh, that when you go to Amazon or you go to the bookstore, you see so many books written about various diets these days. And whether uh, these diets have a focus on eating for your blood type or being gluten-free or higher fiber or eating paleo, one thing that really has emerged as a common thread or central theme is the notion that we've really got to avoid eating sugar. I think we're seeing so much information now really pointing a finger at sugar and also uh, being quite clear that uh, the reason we got into this mess is because of uh, an industry uh, that really wanted us to eat more sugar and at the same time less fat. Uh, but that said, uh, you know, the food uh, industry has not, this has not gone unnoticed by them. The food industry has uh, really uh, understood this and as such has really pushed uh, us to be aware of non-sweetened, artificially sweetened um, various products like beverages, sodas, etc. We're seeing a huge push uh, to make people aware that sugar-free this and that uh, are available. The problem is that, you know, when you're avoiding a sugar and using sugar-free uh, sugar, uh, beverages and artificially sweetened foods and beverages, you're actually setting the stage for more weight gain and even for type 2 diabetes. Now that sounds really counterintuitive, doesn't it? You're, you're consuming a food that has virtually no sugar and, and if it's in the case of a soda, has no calories and yet it increases your risk for uh, gaining weight. How does it happen? We're going to find out in just a moment. But first, I want to uh, just jump to a recent study from Canadian researchers and let's explore what they found. So this study is called Chronic Low Calorie Sweetener Use and Risk of Abdominal Obesity uh, Among Older Adults, a cohort study. And what does it actually mean? Uh, what was actually done in the study? And uh, here's what they did. They took uh, close to 1,500 participants and they followed this group for approximately 10 years. They looked at various what are called anthropometric measurements, you know, the size of their belly, the size of their abdominal fat, um, and they looked at various other things, weight gain, body mass index, etc. But they also looked at what are called their food diaries and paid particular attention to the usage or not of low calorie sweeteners. And here's what they began to notice uh, when they looked at the data, that when comparing users of low calorie sweeteners in red, to non-users and looking specifically at what is called body mass index, that the non-users of these artificial sweeteners actually had a reduction over time uh, in terms of their body mass index in comparison to a pretty dramatic increase in the body mass index in people using these uh, low calorie sweeteners. Now when you look at waist circumference, again uh, the, the users are in red, you see the, the, the waistline of people using these non-caloric uh, sweeteners, these artificially sweetened beverages, diet this and diet that, have a bigger and bigger belly as time goes on, whereas people who refuse these drinks uh, generally tend to lose weight. And their conclusion was that independent of the calorie content, in other words, you know, really getting away of, from this notion of calorie in versus calorie out, the specific food eaten affects subsequent eating behavior. We knew that. It influences intestinal microbiota and that contributes to energy handling and interacts with the endocrine system and neuroendocrine systems, all mechanisms which ultimately affect energy homeostasis. Uh, through these mechanisms, low calorie sweetener use may be a contributor to the obesity epidemic. So this was a very interesting study, again demonstrating that those individuals who favored the use of artificial sweeteners over the time course of the study, averaging about 10 years, 1,500 adults, actually had significant worsening in things like abdominal fat, a body mass index, and overall tended to gain a, a lot more weight. Other studies have shown a significant increased risk for type 2 diabetes in people using artificial sweeteners. And again, why that might sound a bit counterintuitive at first, when we recognize that artificial sweeteners have a profound detrimental or damaging effect on the gut microbiome, 
the microbiota, the organisms that live there, uh, it sort of changes our, our gut bacteria to the extent that we actually uh, get signals from our gut bacteria telling us that we're starving and we tenaciously hold on to every calorie, thus leading to increased weight gain and inflammation. Hallmarks uh, of many of our chronic degenerative conditions, including uh, type 2 diabetes. So again, uh, let's avoid these artificial sweeteners, uh, very, very detrimental towards health. If you want to drink something, uh, drink uh, water. Who knew? Uh, thanks for listening. I'm Dr. David Perlmutter.